Father, please protect our children tonight. Keep these storms from bringing any harm in Jesus' name. I don't know how to do that one. You'll have to do it. I'll have to wait till you start it. It's already started. That's what I said. I'm starting it. Well, honey bunny, sugar plum bim bim can. That goes over here. There it is. <laughs> Good evening. There's Wanda. Hey, my sweet Wanda. <coughs> Leaning on the everlasting arms. No, these aren't the everlasting ones. Well, they're pretty good. I like them. Okay. We are potentially about to have some storms. So if for some reason we jump up, that's why. Or if the broadcast ends. Will the broadcast end? If the network drops, it will. Oh. Sure will. Once again, we're in the shadow. Have we moved forward again? No. Is that better? I think so. I think that's better. Okay. We need to move the table. Okay. Hang on. This is our special effect. Our zoom lens. <laughs> Did you like that? I did, because I just realized if we were high tech, you know, you push a button in it. That's right. I have like silk for Scythia vines, which for Scythia is not a vine, but all over our little chandelier thingy. So it blocks some of the light. It's true. But it looks so pretty. Yep. Okay. We'll get started. Hopefully, have more people to join us here in a minute. They may be having storms too. That's true. We're in uh, Genesis 31. Let's open in prayer. Father, we come before you this evening thanking you for our Bible study, thanking you for your word. I ask, Lord, that you help us to understand it tonight and to grow in Christ. And we just ask that, that your anointing would be on us to receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I like them. Hang on. Hey, Kathy. <clears throat> from the hot Jersey shore. Okay. Yeah, that's right. They're having a heat wave. Tropical heat wave. A lot of, lot of the country's having a heat wave. We're always hot down here. Yeah. She lives at so the good. Jersey shore. You hadn't been swimming with the sharks, have you? Okay. <clears throat> Genesis 31, we've got a really long chapter tonight. Last week it was a little shorter study. This week it is about Jacob getting out of Dodge. Do you like that? I do. <clears throat> the message or the Bible study this week, I'm titling a line out of our chapter, and it's uh, the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac. So when I saw that line, I thought, hey, that sounds significant. So we're going to look at it. So chapter 31 of Genesis, starting with verse 1, we're going to go through all 55 verses uh, to pick up where we left off last week. Jacob has become prosperous by following what we found out was a dream or what God had shown him in the breeding of the goats and the sheep. Right, and mm -hmm. we found out that scientifically, God knew what He was doing, and even before they had uh, biology majors and microscopes and understood the chemistry makeup of plants, God just said, hmm, "I made the popper and I made the almond, and if you'll put those in there, your your livestock will will get uh, more productive." Fertile. That's right. Fertile. And, um, I found it very interesting. I did too. Um, and I won't forget it next breeding right. season. That's mm -hmm. right. So we've got a lot of poppers. We don't have any almonds around here, but we got a lot of poppers. And uh, they're obviously good for ruminant animals. I wonder if you ground up almonds and put it in there. I think feed. it's the bark. It's the bark. Yeah, oh. but you might be able to get that almond bark. Mm. 
Hey, almond bark. Almond bark, Christmas time. <laughs> okay. We digress. So Jacob has become prosperous. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at his career, we'll say, with Laban mm -hmm. through this chapter. He has gotten more and Laban has gotten less. Yes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Genesis 31 1, and he's talking about um, Jacob. And he, Jacob, heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return into the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field and to his flock. Okay. Um, he began to get a feeling that things weren't right where he was. People began to talk. Um, the sons of Laban, their inheritance was dwindling away. They began to see that their father was no longer as prosperous as he had been, but Jacob was more prosperous. They began to complain or talk about it, maybe even intentionally in front of Jacob. Jacob had gone there in the beginning to seek a wife mm -hmm. um, and was promised a wife and was cheated. Right, yes. so we're going to go through that in just a minute. Um, and the main thing we want to see in this is the reason he's about to leave is verse 3. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers. That's a good reason to leave. Yes, it is. Hey, Lenny. Even if you, if things have not been going well, uh -huh. um, a lot of times God allows us to get uncomfortable if he wants us to leave a position in a job, a position that a place in a home, um, move to another home, um, whatever he wants us to change in, he'll make us uncomfortable there. But sometimes we're completely happy in a place, and God says, it's time you leave, mm -hmm. right? Um, God will use people even making mistakes at a job if he wants you to leave or you'll be laid off or you could get fired from a job and God will get your attention with that. There's yes. all kind of re ways that God will get our attention to. Yes. It's not about the money, right? Nope. Not about, uh, well, I can make more money here than I can otherwise, and this is a more comfortable job and that kind of thing. We right. have to remember that, that God, God says it's time to move. It's time to move. That's right. And verse uh, 4, Jacob said and called Rachel and Leah to the field and to his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me, and you know that with all my power I have served your father. I, and your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. Yeah. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring strake shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring strake. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. Laban and he made the agreement back in the last chapter. We looked at that. He had, um, Jacob had seen it in a, in a dream or in a vision, and he understood that. Yes. Well, he, he might not have understood it, but he obeyed it. Right. Um, and I want to point out something. I could have easily skipped over this. Verse 4 Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field and to his flock. He was so diligent at his job that he didn't even leave his job to go home to talk to his wives. Right? Uh -huh. He called them to, to him. He never left sight of the animals he was taking care of. Lightning's been detected in our area. So don't forget that either. We have storms brewing, so... Tommy, I hope you are safe and sound where you are. And Wanda and Mike, I hope y'all are safe. I just muted the phone. Maybe that won't happen again. So, so. Um, but you know, there does come a time when you just know that you know that you know it is time to go. Right. Time to be done with a relationship or whatever. Yeah. So, so he was extremely diligent and he you know 
a lot of times you go, you play back over your mind, what could I have done differently, mm-hmm. or what, what did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. He didn't do anything wrong. No, he didn't. He was an honorable man. He was, and he served in his um, uncle, and he um, he says, verse 7, he changed his wages 10 times. Obviously, that was not 10 times he gave him a cost of living raise. Right. Obviously, the way he's complained about it is he thought he was going to get a hundred dollars and he got seventy five, or he right. thought he was going to get a thousand and he got five hundred, and and you know, I mean, have you ever wanted to work for something and then you ended up getting cheated? Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I remember. Um, well, I won't even go through that. Some some people that were in the ministry cheating other people, but. Uh, taking advantage of them because they were Christian. It's just not mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Um, so we're down to verse 9, mm-hmm. verse 10. And it came to pass at the, t- at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise and get thee out of this land and return into the land of thy kindred. So here he he explains the, the situation that the angel of the Lord, which is who? Jesus. Jesus. Most of the time in the Old Testament, when it says the angel of the Lord instead of an angel of the Lord, mm-hmm. in the Hebrew it's written differently, and it is basically an incarnation of Jesus before he yes. came in the in the way of flesh. Uh, a lot of Bible theologians believe that. Um, it is always a prominent thing, or a prominent event when the angel of the Lord appears. Yes. And here is the angel of the Lord. Um, came to him to guide him and he said I've seen all that Laban doeth unto thee God knows when someone has done you wrong God knows when you have um, been honorable in something and somebody stabs you in the back Right. Right? right God knows that now it hurts when that happens but understand that God will vindicate you yes he will Boy, it's happened many times in my life. Amen. And Kathy said she did, never knew that about the angel of the Lord being Jesus. Yep. Um, and a lot of times it's in capital, bold, actually all caps, T-H-E, the angel of the Lord. So just start watching for that as we're studying. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, and God said, I'm the God of Bethel. Remember Bethel? Yes. Before Jacob came to Laban, he went through Bethel, and he dreamed a dream. He put his head on a stone for a pillar. Mm-hmm. He dreamed a dream, and he found he saw the stairway going up into heaven, and the angels coming and going to heaven on that spot, and he it frightened him some, and he said, this is basically the gateway to heaven, and the, the house of God is what Bethel means, and God reminded him. Now, this is, I haven't gotten there yet, but this is 20 years later. Yes. When you when you have an experience with God, it can seem so far removed from where you are right now, but God remembers that time. Yes. It might even be a moment when you made a vow before God and you've forgotten that vow. Mm-hmm. You have tried maybe, and then it just kind of, uh, I don't know, you get kind of glazed over and just going through life with it. But if you do that, God hasn't forgotten it. That's right. And we don't need to forget it. That's right. And he will remind you of it. I've had a lot of things that I don't even want to say I put it on the back burner. I literally forgot about it. And then, boom, it was in my face one day. God reminded me of it and broke me into tears because I thought that's an event or a memory that I've forgotten about. Right. (laughs) Right. So God understood that. And then he also, God remembered, he said, thou vowedest a vow unto me there. Remember, God said, I did this and you did this. Yes. Right? So 
He said, I'm this God. I'm the same God. Uh -huh. um, this was an assurance to Jacob that this is this was closure for this event in his life. Mm -hmm. This was the beginning was at Bethel. The end was I'm the God of Bethel. Amen. Right? So he had a, a start and a stop time. Amen. Um, a lot of people work uh, jobs. They work mission ministries, uh, whatever their task is. They work and it's sort of open-ended. And then there's some point where it's time to go. Right, right. right. Uh, my retirement that's coming up in a short period of time, um, I've got a idea of where I want to go to, but that may not be the exact one. That's right? true. We, we kind of set goals, but God is the one that works it out. That's right. So whenever you have something going on in your life, understand that God will make it clear when it's the time mm -hmm. to move on. Yeah. And you can rest assured that when you make that decision, you, you didn't make a wrong decision. Right. God always gives. He always has me given the confirmation. Yes. Right. Of things that. Um, so because down the road, the devil will make you doubt that you made the right decision. That's the thing. And I've said it so many times to our children. You need to know that, you know, that, you know, because when it all hits the fan, you want to be able to say to God, I know that this is what you told me. Right. <laughs> you don't ever have to want to move in doubt. Right. You want to know that you know. Right. Sometimes but, you have to step out in faith, and it's kind of scary, but you still have to trust God and know. Right. And you stand on that mm -hmm. and move forward. That's right. Um, hey, Letitia, good to see you. Yes, uh, Christophany, Lenny said is when Jesus appears as an angel. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Verse 14, and they had called Rachel and Leah, his wives, to tell them this. This is this was something. And I love this part because this shows that a man of God does not just say, I'm doing this whether you agree with it or not. Mm. He asked his wives their opinion. You know, if there's any husbands listening, Understand that God gave your wife wisdom to help you in your decisions because so many times this is what we have. You know, as a man, we've got the blinders on or we see one facet of this and, yeah, we're going to do this. This is the right decision. And then the wife says, wait a minute, have you thought about this aspect? So let's look at that. Verse 14, and Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, is there yet any portion of inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted on him of him strangers? For he hath sold us and hath quite devoured all, also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now that now then whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Wow. Is that not wow. him listening and they and them agreeing? Yeah. Right. Because their father cheated them as well as him. He, he yeah. didn't just cheat wow. Jacob. He che cheated his daughters out. Mm -hmm. And all the inheritance, obviously they had brothers that we don't know about because it said Laban's sons. Yes. They had inheritance. But these two daughters were sold. And I'm not even sure if that's a, that's a good... Um, way to think about it to think about someone being sold it's almost yeah but if you think about the process he didn't just give his daughters he gave his daughters if jacob would work for him right. and he got 14 years of labor out of jacob that's right that's a lot of money if you that's, look at that anybody would salary. make a woman feel sold yeah yeah yep. kathy said i don't know if it was because it was so hot today, but John was exhausted, came home from cooking on, the, working on an old forklift in tears and said he was faced with something he hadn't done in 40 years and totally forgot. He, he prayed, asked God to help him, and suddenly he was just doing it like riding a horse. He was in tears because he said it was a reminder to seek God first. I love my mushy man. He looks like a tough guy, but his heart is the best. I am oh. so blessed. Praise well, that's God. That's, that's wonderful. Thank that's you for wonderful. sharing that. That, yes. that just goes right along with what we're talking about. I love that. 
Give your mushy man a hug from me. <laughs> so they, the two wives said, whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. Yes. We're behind you 100%. Um, yes. Verse 17, then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried all away all his cattle and all his goods, which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Padanaram to go to Isaac, his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. So, think about this. Get this mental image of Jacob and all his family leaving. And it's not just his family. He obviously had maybe uh, workers that had, he had hired. Right. Because he has a lot of livestock by now. So he's probably got a lot of people to help keep his livestock. Understand that when it says cattle here, it's a lot like saying um, corn, a corn of wheat or a corn. Corn is not maize or not the kind of corn we have in the United States. Corn is a kernel or a grain in the Bible. They didn't have corn. They had wheat and barley. And in the same way, the word cattle here does not mean cows. It means livestock. Yes. Cattle, he says they they got in the cattle. It under, we understand that it's the sheep. Ah. Last week we talked about the Jacob's four horned sheep. Uh, if you've not seen that, just do a little search of Jacob's four horned sheep, because the the breed that they believe came from his sheep uh, have two horns coming out here and two horns coming out here. They really look very strange. We had one of them many years ago, and Roscoe. Roscoe really was, was the ram. It was a. Uh, it was he was quite uh, the animal, and he he could uh, get stuck in a fence in a heartbeat though, with all those horns. But um, he was a good daddy. He was, he was. a good producer. He mm -hmm. was. Um, so Laban went to shear the sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Now I'm going to stop and talk about these images. Laban was not necessarily the most godly man. He was not. That's that is such an understatement. <laughs> you mean this was not a godly man? It goes without man. saying because of the way he treated his nephew and his own daughters. But in spite of him trying to cheat and in spite of him changing the wages 10 times and in spite of say, saying, I'm going to give you my daughter, Rachel, you'll work seven years and after seven years, slipping Leah in there. Yeah. You know, I mean, in spite of all the things, the, the shrewdness of this man, God did not let him prosper. No. Nope. He did not let him prosper. He has, Laban has household idols. That's what they're called. The, yeah. The images and Rachel stole them, and I don't know why she would have stolen them unless they were maybe gold. Maybe she looked at it and said, that's something of value. Or she liked them, because that's how she was raised. However. Maybe she still prayed to them. However. Mm. So, so she stole these, these idols that were in a household shrine. I looked it up. There was a name for it. Wait for it. Um... Teraphim, T-E-R-A-P-H-I-M, the household idols were the teraphim. Um, one um, theologian said it could have been that he just used them as a focal point to worship Jehovah God. But wow. And this was before the Ten Commandments where God says, Thou shalt not have idols before thee. Oh, right? any graven image. Any yeah. graven image. So this was before that. Laban... Um, could have been a uh, follower of Jehovah, but he was not a good man. Right. And God did not allow him to prosper. And Rachel stole these images. Now, this is going to be part of the story. Um, verse 20, And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban, the Syrian, and that he told him not that he had fled. So he fled with all that he had had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. So again, look at the image of this. He's got 11 children now, all the way down to Joseph. Actually, he's got 12 because Dinah was born. Right. He's got 12 children, the, the 11 tribes or 11 sons, rather, including the, the baby, which is Joseph at this time. All these children, 
um, his two wives and his two concubines, mm-hmm. right? And plus all his livestock. So four different households. Yes, and he's a he's got a caravan of all these right. animals. They're riding camels. Verse 22, and it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. So he had a three-day head start. Obviously, they didn't live right under each other. Right. Uh, he didn't see him ride by on the way out of the neighborhood. Kathy said Terah means earth, doesn't it? So that maybe it was little idols of worshiping little earth gods. Could be. That's interesting. Teraphim. <clears throat> Verse 23, and he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days journey and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. So he had to hustle to catch up, but he only had a few people probably in his group, whereas Jacob left with all this livestock and they don't move very fast. Yeah. Right? Um, and Mount Gilead is where they, they met. Verse 24, and God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, take heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. <clears throat> so God had even prepared this man mm-hmm. to, to deal with Jacob so that he didn't say something that he would regret. Yes. Right? Yes. That he would actually just be open and listen to the truth. Right. Because so many times when someone has done you wrong, they think they're in the right. I think I have a duckling that has gotten out. I hear it. He's upset. Don't, don't trip over that cord. I'm with you. Yep, we have baby ducks on the far end of this room, and I can hear them quacking. He wants to get back in. So... You find it? Okay. He just wanted your attention. I thought he maybe had gotten out of the box. But a lot of times people that have done wrong, someone wrong or they are they are pretty much set in their ways, they need a little awakening to really stop and listen to the truth. And I think that's what God was doing for Laban. Don't speak good or bad to him. Uh, verse 25, then Laban overtook Jacob. And Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done, that thou hast stolen away unawares unto me, and carried away my daughters as captives, taken with the sword? Uh-huh. Taken with the sword. Yeah, you did it against their will. Uh-huh. Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me, and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs and tabret and with harp? I don't think in a million years that this man would have sent them away in that. Nope. I think Jacob understood the situation. Um, I have heard of people that gave, that turned in two weeks notice. Actually, I had this happen to me years ago. Turned in two weeks notice. My new job was going to start, you know, after the two weeks was up. So I told my, my supervisor, I said, I'm, I got another job at working here. I turned in my two weeks notice. He got mad at me because in his mind, he kind of had me under his thumb. He was paying me minimum wage to climb towers. And he had himself a a cheap tower climber. And uh, so he had me to do this. And I got a job making quite a bit more in the starting pay and a good future. And this guy wouldn't speak to me. And and, and to spot or to hurt me, he, <laughs> after a week, he called me back in. He says, we don't need you for the second week. Just go on home. Wow. So he was trying to hurt me and ended up, I had plenty of money to carry me through. And it, it ended up giving me a week of vacation, <laughs> which I had never had. He gave me some time off. So, you know, he meant for harm and God meant it for good, mm-hmm. right? That's so right. here is... Here's a man that says, if you had told me, I would have sent away with mirth, with songs, with tabret, and with harp. Mm. Verse 28, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters, thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. 
But the God of your father spake unto me yesterday night, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Sounds to me like he already spoke bad. I think he, I think he also, um, if God had not spoken to him, would have heard him. Because oh, yeah. he said, um, it's in the power of my hand to do you hurt. So I think that he probably, his personality and his, his the way he thought he was mistreated, mm -hmm. um, I think he he would have done wrong by Jacob if God had not said that. Yes. Hey, uh, Lori. Verse 30, And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my God? Now we get down to the crux of the matter. Bum, bum, bum. He didn't really care about his daughters or his grandsons. He wanted his little God. He wanted his little idols. We're going to do it that way because they could have been like this. But <coughs> No, I think they were probably fairly small. I think that... We will find out. I think in a that moment. we'll see that he really. I yeah, think. I, they, they, I think you were right. They were probably made of gold. Or something very precious because. I don't think this was a devout man. Yeah. He was coming after value. Yeah. Verse thirty-one. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, "Because I was afraid, for I said, peradventure thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me." So I think after this many years, after 20 years, he knew this man. Yeah. He knew exactly what he would do. That's right. Um, I think you're right. In fact, the uh, supervisor I was telling you about is my example. When I turned in my two weeks notice, I was telling the uh, secretary of that, that office, and she said, her eyes jumped, and she said, you better not tell, you better let me tell him. I said, oh, because mm -hmm. she knew him. She knew what was happening. He ended up, the man ended up coming out drunk that night, staggering around drunk and yelling at me and telling me how I tr he had treated me as a son. Wow. Yeah, it was a ridiculous thing mm. many years ago. Uh, verse 31, Jacob answered and said, I said to, and said to Laban, because I was afraid, for I said, peradventure thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. I think he legitimately did not know, because had he known Rachel, his favorite wife, I hate to even say that, but that's really what it was. At the beginning. And had he known Rachel had stolen these, he would not have made the statement. Whoever's got them, you can kill them, All right? So. But the truth is that also shows the godly heart of Jacob that he could not see evil in his people. He could not see, you know, some people, you know, just walk around and they just hate everybody. But Jacob believed in his people. Mm -hmm. Because he wouldn't have, if he'd have even thought for a second that one of his servants or one of his children were potential to ta to steal, mm -hmm. he would have never said that. And he was already taking what he had earned. Yes. He did not need to take more. He did not teach theft to his people. Okay, here's a question, and maybe some of you can put in your comments. Why do you think Rachel took it? I think they were either valuable or they were like heirloom things for her hmm. either they had a lot of monetary value or they had been in her home with her father all of her life and so she wanted what do you, you think well when you look back at uh, verse 14 through 16 oh go ahead what did Kathy say? Kathy said, I looked it up. Some people believe those little idols had supernatural powers. Mm. They probably did. What was you going to say? Well, I was going to say that, like in verse 15, are we not counted of, counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us and hath quite devoured also our money. They felt like that he had taken from them. And and when they say we have, we were counted as strangers, the relationship obviously was not there. Right. Once they went into Jacob's home, it sounds like he had no relationship with them. Right. 
he probably never spoke to them. Yeah. Um, this this could have been one of those men that he had his sons and he didn't need his daughters. Some men just had, they they liked their sons. Mm-hmm. Daughters are really not useful for anything. Well, you know they, especially during that time period, sons were a, a value to them, and and the daughters were just a commodity to earn more. But right. once they're out of your household, they have no value. That's right. So sadly, well, that's sort of still a problem in some families. Yeah. Whatever the reason, Rachel, of all the people in his family. She had the opportunity, and she took them. Yeah. And what was the what was Kathy? Oh, Kathy said the significance of the that the the little idols may they believed they had supernatural powers, and she said some Hebrew scholars believe they were figures of the ancestors. Mm. Ah, so maybe they meant something to her like a photo album, but to him as a source of power. Interesting. Okay. Kathy is thinking. Yeah. She got her thinking cap on. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why we do this because I know I love it. And we don't know, but that is a great possibility. Yes. For, for how whatever how the interesting! Reason. I love that you shared that, Kathy. Thank you. Mm, amen. Yes. Of uh, whatever the reason, she took them, and thirty-three Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tent, but he found them not. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. And now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. Now, before I read this next line, understand that the camel's furniture was the saddle. You know, you've seen that. Yeah. Big, big uh, wooden frame shaped like this. And the people sat on that and it had pads on it and it was sort of a comfortable enough to sit on, on for a long trip, it was comfortable enough sitting in the tent. Yeah, like a chair. Right, just like a chair. And she sat on this, 35, and she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched but found not the images. It was her special time. She had her monthly cycle, and or she told him she did. She said... I'm having my monthly cycle, the time, the special, special time, of women, time. Of, for, that women have, and I can't get up. Yep. And that sufficed him, and he moved on, right? There's nobody in the trunk. You might as well look somewhere else. That's right. Um, he found not the images. 36, and Jacob was wroth and chose with Laban, and Jacob answered and said to Laban, what is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy, thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years, <coughs> excuse me, have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beast I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day and the, night, the drought consumed me, and in the frost by night my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for two daughters and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Do you, did you pick up on the the tone difference here. He was he, falsely accused, and now he's had enough. He's had enough, and he's had he he's actually had an opportunity to come out and speak his mind. Now I wonder if God didn't use this as an opportunity in Jacob to be completely honest with Laban. Right. I wonder if he was the kind that would was a little too timid to just come out and speak his mind. Until this point, right, and like you said, he'd had enough, and I mean, it was wrong for her to take this household idol. We know that um, Achan stole the idol in Ai and mm-hmm. caused a, caused a curse on Israel in the Book of Joshua. So it it could have been something seen as well. She does need to die, right? But 
the way it turned out for Jacob's sake. God had it where he now, <laughs> excuse me, he now has the perfect opportunity to just have the upper hand on Laban. Right. And the and the let Laban know how he feels about it. Yeah. He mentions he's mentioned this before about his about his uh salary being changed ten mm-hmm. times, uh, and having to work all these years. Mm-hmm. Um and I love the way he even says and I, and who who could could Mike said she just wanted to keep sake from home. Yeah. That who could who could say today that you would have the integrity to do this kind of thing that your employer has a loss, you take the loss yourself. I know. Because that's what he just said. When an animal was killed by by a wild animal, I took the loss. We just we'll just count that as one of my sheep that got killed. You didn't have any. He had not even in twenty years recognized that. Yeah. But Jacob took the loss. He was really being honorable to um to Laban and to his right. to his employer and and I think that the integrity of someone like that always gets rewarded by God whether man rewards that or not. Yes. Being falsely accused is is heartbreaking when you have know that you've done all that you were supposed to do and right. more. Right. We've had to live through it many times. Right. We're, we actually are going through that now. God will vindicate. That's right. And he will. Um, not, he does see that. We just looked at it. And how many times I've told the children, you know, if you don't lie or you don't take something that doesn't belong to you or you don't cheat, you don't have to worry if you're accused. You have no reason to worry. I think that's why Jacob said, Go ahead, search. Right. Do, go, you go right ahead. My people don't do that. And in fact, Rachel was raised by Laban. Well. You know, whatever reason she took, what did not belong to her. Mm-hmm. Yep, that bears on him. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, verse 42 Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God hath seen mine affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. Rebuked thee yesternight. Did you catch that? Yeah, when God spoke to him and that he obviously ignored. <laughs> so he said, the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac. So why did he have the fear of Isaac? What was the fear of Isaac? His father, right? Jacob's mm-hmm. father, the fear of Isaac. Do you think it? Tell us, Obi Wan. Well, do you think it could be that he wanted to honor his father or his family name, right? right? He wanted to do what was right. So you're saying in the respect of yes. Isaac, not yes. the fear, right. right? Well, that's what he that's what he said. Except yeah. the God of my father, the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely thou hast sent me away now empty. He sees that he is blessed for obeying his parents. Yes. Right? Yes. Children, obey your parents and the Lord. For this right? is right. This is right. The first commandment with a promise. Yes. That it may go well with thee. Yes. Right? So he, he knows this. He, I love the way that the, the Ten Commandments are written pre-Ten Commandments time. Right. right? <laughs> you know, God's law was there. Before we even read that God established his law, his law was there in in um, life because, I mean, from Cain and Abel, they knew that was wrong. Right. It was not a written down law, but they knew it was, was wrong. So here is a man that respects his, his parents and respects the God that he is following, and he knows that he has been blessed because of that. Yes. And that is um, another um, reason that God blesses us is when we respect him and honor him and recognize he is the source of the blessings. 
43, and Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my, my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and these um, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters and unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his, son, his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it. Ah. Oh. Hang on just a second. Good luck with that one. Jigar say, hey, doth, doth, uh, and Jacob called it Galid. Because Jacob <laughs> couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> right? That's right. He said, Jacob said, I'm Laban, call you call it what you want to. I'm calling it Galid. So I looked up. Jigar say, hey, doth, uh, and it means a witness heap. A witness heap. That sort of lacks imagination. Yeah. And... Galid, I looked it up, it means a witness heap. <laughs> wow. It means the exact same thing. So you say tomato and I say tomato. You say Jagarda the Dutha. And you say Galid. So they both had a name for it. They had to have a name. And Laban said, this heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. Now, Mizpah means watchtower. You know, that line right there, that verse 49, is said so often yep. between friends, between family members. And, I, and I'm going to bring out a little comedy in this. Okay. Um, many years ago, I don't know if they still have these. There were people that had necklaces that had two sides to a coin. Maybe you've seen these. It was a little, probably a quarter size coin, zigzag cut in the middle. Right. And it had this verse on it. And it, it was called a Mizpah coin. You can look it up, Mizpah coin necklace or whatever. And it says on it, the Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. And it sounds so sweet. Yes. And like boyfriend and girlfriend would wear them or husband and wife would wear them. They said, when we're apart, the Lord watch between me and thee. And maybe sometimes we get back together and we stick our two pieces together. And, and it sounds so sweet. sweet. It is right? sweet. And so this sounds like Jacob and Laban are saying, hug my neck. The Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. But this is not what it means. What does it mean? Let's continue on. This is where this is where verses are taken out of context. Okay, hang on. Lenny said, I keep thinking of how us people that have the Holy Spirit living in us and how our eyes are open and our heart have changed. My daughter and I have conversations about how do people not see the lies and the corruption? Mm hmm Things in the world that are so obviously sin and wrong. And then we remember that we have the Holy Spirit living in us who discerns for us. Jacob surely changed after he wrestled with God. He knew who he answers to. Just thinking of the difference between Jacob and Laban. Yes, you make sense. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Lenny, for sharing that. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. This man the is... blinders are still on yeah. for folks who don't have. That's, that's, that's right. I have got to remember that. And it's hard to witness to someone when you have exactly what they need you know this their life is a mess and they just need god and you share the gospel with them and they go hmm. oh what was you saying yeah well anyway i've got this problem uh, my life's a mess but thanks for spending time with me or whatever they it just goes that right the over their head. eyes of their enlightenment that's have right. not been opened that's right mm, that's good lenny thank you Thank you so much. So, Watchtower, a pile of rocks, Mizpah. <laughs> yes, sorry. The Lord watch between me and thee. Mm -hmm. Verse 50, if thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take otherwise beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, behold this heap, and behold this pillar which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be a witness, and this pillar be a witness, and I will not pass over this heap to thee. 
and thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. Ah. If you come past this pile of rocks, you're mine. If I go over it, I'm fair game for you. So God watched between us. Yes. Wow. Right. That's deep. And and it was it's ex actually exactly the opposite. Keep us from killing each other. We won't kill each other because <laughs> this will be a watchtower between me and you that we will not. That's interesting, honey. Right. And again, it shows you how a verse can be taken out of context. Yes, you you're know? right. Um, somebody can, somebody can give you a completely honest um, statement and have a long discussion of something, and you take, and the devil will take one little snippet of your line out of there and just. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if the devil takes God's word and takes one line out of it and twists it, he'll take one line that you've said out of it and twist it, right? That's right. <coughs> That's right. Taking stuff out of context is a sin. That's right. And the devil does it. Yep. Like verse 53, the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us and Jacob swear by the fear of his father Isaac. Again, the fear of his father Isaac. Yes. He wanted to do what was right. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning, Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned into his place. Now, this is the last Amen. time Laban will see his grandchildren. That's a little, for me, that's a little sad as a grandfather to know that I would be able to say, I would have to kiss my grandkids by and would not see them again. But he's the one that set this up. He didn't care about his grandchildren. He didn't. He did not. He's the one that said, okay, you know, it, that, that phrase that people use, and I hate it, well, we'll just agree to disagree. I don't know who came up with that phrase, but I hate it. I hate when somebody says, we'll agree to disagree. That means you've settled nothing. We're just not going to talk about it anymore. But how can you, how, what else can you do? When you can't, like Lenny said, if you're functioning through the Holy Spirit and they're not, there is no agreement. There can't be. How can two walk together unless so, they be in agreement? So what do you do? You just agree to disagree? You can't walk together. That's the catch. That's the part. You can't stay connected. Right. You cannot walk together. So this family actually mm. split here and... <laughs> Rightly so, and for and God said to Jacob, "Do this." Yes. Notice that God didn't say to Laban, "Say anything except don't say good or bad to Keep me." Keep your mouth closed. Keep your mouth and closed. You'll stay and out of trouble. That's right. So Jacob is now leaving and headed back to his father's land, to the land of Isaac. He is now. Um. 20 years from being from home, 20 years from um, Isaac being dead, really. Yeah. All right. Now, this that's another thing. Isaac is dead. Yeah. Rebecca is dead. Right. So he has, he is still honoring his parents, even though he's, he's, their name is, and their, um, what's the word? The family name and the family their reputation. reputation uh, he doesn't want to spoil that, right? That's a godly thing to do. Absolutely. So instead of spoiling their their reputation as a man of God, he he comes in and he says, "I still have the fear of Isaac." Yeah. Right. Right. Respect for right. Isaac. I remember one of my siblings one time. Um, asking my dad when he was doing something, uh, some kind of skill or something farm related. And, and uh, my grandfather, my papa, he had been gone for many years and my, my sibling didn't, uh, didn't remember him. And so anyway, he said, would papa be proud of me for doing that? Aww. You know, this was grandfather that he had not met, but he had he'd heard so much about. But he said, would papa be proud of me for that? 
So oh. there is something in us about wanting to please our parents, right? Yes. And I understand even if you have parents that have mistreated you, you want to make them happy. You want to please them, right? Yeah. And it, it's just there's something wrong when we don't do that, you know. So here he wants, Jacob has the the fear of Isaac. And I'm missing comments. Kathy was just saying she she was thinking about the videos of the unborn babies and wondering how people cannot see they want what they want to kill blinders. It has to be. I agree. I agree. I've heard of a lot of situations where women did not have abortions after, in fact, Save a Life, the local um, pro-life group, um, their first fundraiser was to raise, back in the 80s when they formed, was to raise money for a sonogram machine because at the time they were new yeah. and they wanted to, to show girls that came in, women that came in, that there's movement here. There's a heartbeat. There's a child you know, Paul and I have talked about that so many times, how they cannot see, besides the fact that Satan's just deceived them so completely. And and relating to another situation we were talking about at the time, he said they can't admit it. At this point in time, they cannot admit that it is a child and that they are killing it. Because if that day ever came, the torrential flood of the truth would cause them to lose their minds. They would go insane with what they had done. And, you know, a lot of, uh, not just abortion, a lot of things like that. And I, I know you are going to think I'm crazy, but I think that's why so many who are in sin love this demon acid rock music and they cut that stuff up so loud so they can't hear their own thoughts and you can hear it you know it's blasting out of cars and 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 on you know we'll we'll pull up a, a youtube video of how to clean out your lawnmower and it's got this blaring rock music on it and paul always says why do they have to put music on everything? That's why. They have to block out their other thoughts. They have to get rid of that. Mm. And and it's like Lenny said, it's it's when you're walking with the Holy Spirit, you see things, you understand things, and when you're not, it's just this Oh my goodness. Tragic. Yeah. Laban would have had Bad music. <laughs> he would have had really bad music. I just wonder where you was going with that. Yeah, yeah that, they are so angry and hell been on their view. Yes. So maybe that was the uh, mirth and songs and tabret and harp that he was going to send his children off with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to have a rock concert. That's right. <laughs> Kathy said, that's why I love that you post so many videos on YouTube. I hope Jesus will come. Or, People will come across them and find Jesus. Oh, that's our prayer. Amen. Sowing a little seed here and there. Amen. And we'll see. Well, we've gotten through 31 chapters of Genesis. Yes. I think it goes I'm enjoying to every one of them. Chapters How Genesis. long have we been doing it now, <laughs> Thursday nights? Since January. Since January, really? I it's only so. taken six months? Only taken six months. <laughs> Yeah, and we're not 50, done yet. 50 chapters in Genesis. I, think I may not hit every, every chapter. I think I might have skipped a chapter. I've but loved it. I have absolutely loved this. We're going to keep going and just see see what God does. But, as long um, as the power stays on and the internet works. Yeah. And if it stops, we'll just do it here and I'll, I'll miss y'all. Yeah. So, thanks for joining us this evening. If you got any other uh, comments go ahead and put them on the the video and and we are going to try tomorrow night did you decide it's six or seven six o'clock six o'clock tomorrow evening that'll be six o'clock central what well, how are we going to do it are we going to do it like a facebook messenger call or yeah, yeah. 
Well, do you know if it's limited to how many people can be on? I have no idea. We'll Ma try to do. <clears throat> go ahead. Message Angie because we'll start with her as the pilot, but we're going to do a Facebook group messenger call, and we're going to talk about uh, preparedness and maybe homesteading skills and just basically um, being prepared for emergencies and. Yeah. We could make it a regular thing, possibly, but we this came up in her Bible study on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and um, she spoke to the ladies there, and I just, some of you may have not been on that call or on that Bible study, but, um, and we may get some comments off of YouTube that, of somebody, because we have some people on YouTube that comment that they can't get on Facebook. And the thing is, we don't want to make this a public broadcast, because right. it's, we're not recording it, and we're not going to make a public thing. It'll just be for those of you who join us. Yes, and, and if it doesn't work for Facebook Messenger, we'll we'll figure out another way to do it. You know, we talked about the Zoom call, but that has never worked for me. I don't know. We've had issues with Zoom. Um, not everybody has an iPhone. FaceTime is an iPhone feature only, so if you've got an Android, it doesn't work. Yeah. You might not have a an iPhone. So we'll try <clears throat> Facebook Messenger phone call. So if you're not on Facebook Messenger, maybe you can get the app before tomorrow night and we'll just try it. And if that doesn't work, we'll try something else. Yeah, if you're using a regular computer or laptop or desktop and you've got Facebook on the web, then you've got the Messenger. messenger. And you don't need a camera necessarily you just need a microphone or or if you don't have a microphone speakers yeah right so, so you can listen just listen and, and um i know most of y'all yes what people did for the depression good idea lenny mm -hmm. um i know most i have the comments from the tuesday bible study where folks said please add them to the call so i've got that list and if somebody's listening tonight that was not on that Tuesday Bible study, private message me so I know I can add you onto the list. Right. I wonder if they still have Skype. You used to could do Skype calls. I think so, but we'll I haven't just, got it on mine. We'll just use Facebook Messenger for now. Okay. Okay. Good night, everybody. We love you all. Thanks for joining.